Well, let's go. I know your big thing is keto, like that you are really an expert in that. So no, not really. Kind of, well, t- kind of talk about, <laughs> kind of talk about how you know, because that's what people are going to. I right, mean, right. you see it on on the internet everywhere. There's little videos of check what your metabolism is, and you know, is keto for you, whatever. So, what um, what are some tips for people who may have started that and it didn't work so well? Are there like common pitfalls that uh, you want to avoid? Yeah, and this is a good one, folks. And for my video crew here, you guys are the best. Why does, keto, why does the ketogenic diet fail? All right, here's why it fails. Um, number one, when you shift over to the ketogenic diet, it needs to be done slowly. Or, she got lightheaded. So our brain is a glucose monster. What you're doing on the ketogenic diet, you're shifting your brain and metabolism from burning glucose to, to, to burning fat or the ketone that's in fat uh, called beta-hydroxybutyrate. So the ketogenic diet is wonderful, but everybody responds to it differently. And sometimes they get anxiety. Sometimes if they get up, they get dizzy. They get orthostatic hypotension. Uh, their hands will shake. They may break out into a sweat. A lot of people on keto, this scares the hell out of them. And they're like, I'm not doing that diet, man. I almost had an anxiety attack on my car. That's understood. That's why, folks, when you come to us, we show you how to do the ketogenic diet and the intermittent fasting the right way. We're in no rush. This is a marathon. A marathon is 26.2 miles. We're going to take this a mile at a time. I don't want you to drop 10. All those advertisements saying you're going to drop 10 pounds in a week. That's horse shit. You're going to lose body fluid. Okay, they're running a game down people, they're lying to people, and there's a lot of weight loss programs that just want to get you through the door and have you waste your money. I want to teach you the basics of your metabolism so you could plug this stuff in for, your, for a lifetime. I mean, when you get into your 60s, you don't just want, if you lose too much weight, you're going to lose muscle mass and that's going to protect you, your immune system. So you want to protect your immune system, you want to maintain your muscle mass as you age. So again, fat distribution is genetically determined, hormonally regulated, okay? We are not what we eat, we are what we absorb. So the, these are some things that when people hear us talk, Chrissy, they go, oh, I'm gonna check that off. So the ketogenic diet a lot of times doesn't work because the doctor doesn't check the hormone levels. If a woman goes on the ketogenic diet, Chrissy, and she's estrogen dominant, what's gonna happen? Well, she's, she's gonna hang on to fat if she yeah. has that much estrogen, yeah. Right, right, so we gotta balance out our hormones and use the ketogenic diet in synergy. All right. What if a woman, God forbid, loses somebody in her family, which we're all going to lose people we love. It's it's very frustrating. Or she's going through a divorce or she just lost her job and she's on the ketogenic diet and she's under stress. Why wouldn't she be losing weight? Increased cortisol. Thank you. See that? You're so smart. You should be sitting here. (laughs) (laughs) I just been writing all your stuff for that long. No, (laughs) No, but and again, we want all the ladies to know out there. If you're under stress and you're increasing the stress hormone cortisol, here, do this. Don't listen to me. Uh, Google elevated cortisol and body fat. Elevated cortisol and abdominal body fat. You'll see what I mean. Next time you're at your doctor, if your diet, if you're trying to lose weight and it's not working, tell your doctor, I want these tests. Remember, we'll do it again. Estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, thyroid free T3, free T4, morning cortisol, fasting insulin, and hemoglobin A1C. And most likely your doctor's going to say, well, if I got these results back, I'm not going to know what to do. Just tell them I want these tests done, run them through insurance, and then folks, call us, we'll tell you what to do with them, right? Right. Well, the reason that most people go on the ketogenic diet is because they, they found out they're a carbohydrate addict. That's what they, you know, there was a, actually, I think, a book called that or something like that. But um, so tell me about carbohydrate addiction and kind of what, you know, what do you do about that? How do you know you're a carbohydrate addict? Yeah, that, that's a very good question. Uh, folks, I, I helped set up some addiction centers, opiate, alcohol. I've worked directly with addictions, opiate, alcohol, Suboxone. Um, traveled to some of the best addiction centers in Florida and looked at what they were doing. And I stepped away after I met these owners. I'm like, damn, I know we can do this better. And two of the things I learned in there, people that our addicts, pound the carbohydrates. They're medicating themselves with the carbohydrates for a reason. Carbohydrates elevate the feel-good chemical, serotonin, and elevate the chemical uh, neurotransmitter, dopamine. So we're gonna be working with continuous glucose monitors. It's a monitor you're gonna wear, where if you get back to eating that steak, broccoli, and baked potatoes, mashed potatoes, 
After your meal, the glucose monitor will tell you how, how high your blood sugar is. Because if your blood sugar goes up and you're eating carbohydrates, it's going to calm you down. So I call white rice bread and pasta poor man's Prozac. But again, people are under stress. It could be an executive. It could be a mom with postpartum depression. Athletes, I, I was hanging out with endurance athletes for 20 years. At night, I used to get up in the middle of the night when I couldn't sleep and I used to eat a, eat, a, eat a bunch of rice or eat ice cream just to knock myself out. I didn't know what I was doing back in, in the late 80s, but basically I was medicating myself from all the elevated cortisol. So what, what can we glean from that? Some people, maybe 5% of the people, have a carbohydrate addiction. We have a program for carbohydrate addicts. If, and we're training coaches right now. With these people, you have to go really, really slow. The time is now for you to take control of your health. Everybody and everybody has a story. Let us find out yours today.